Hello everyone, welcome to Soho Creator Learning Table Series. My name is Preeti Venkatesh. So today we are just going to discuss about enabling retail business with low cost. So this is going to be the topic of today's session. So today we are going to discuss about enabling retail business with low cost. And this is the agenda with which I am going to drive the session. So first we will be discussing about what is retail and what are the key functions involved in the retail business and, and second point very important thing managing the inventory how a project how a product will be managed in the inventory will be discussed under this topic and as the third point we will be uh, discussing about the barcode scanner and the print template options available in the zoho creator and then as the fourth point, I've just brought a sample demo application to show us a demo in today's session. We will be discussing about the process involved and the product I have used for integration in that application. And at last, I will be showcasing the live demonstration of that application. And at last, we will also be discussing about other use cases and best practices you can think about while um, enabling the retail with low code. So this is the agenda with which I'm going to drive this session. So now, now let's talk about introduction to retail. So retail, when I talk about retail, retail is the final step of distributing the merchandise to the end, or end uh, customers. We can say like this is the final step of selling the product to the uh, customers. So when I talk about retail business, there are two main types of retailers available. So one is going to be the store retailer uh, and another is going to be the non-store retailer. So when I talk about store retailers, all the shopping malls, supermarkets, hypermarkets, where the products are sold in small quantity to the customers uh, are known as the store retailer. Here, all the... Um, businesses that comes under the brick and the mortar model uh, is called as the store retailers. Also, we have another type called as non-store retailers. Here, we will be discussing about e-commerce, mail ordering of a product, vending machine, direct selling of the product to the customers. So, all these businesses are categorized under the non-store retailers. So, these are the two types of retailers or retails um, followed in the day-to-day -day life. The traditional business model followed by the, these retailers are very simple. So imagine I'm a retailer. So I will be buying the product in a bulk quantity at a wholesale price from my wholesaler or suppliers. After buying the product, I will be selling the product in smaller quantities to my end consumers or customers at the retail price. The difference between this wholesale price and the retail price is going to be the gross profit for my store. I'll be using this gross profit to perform all my operational expenses. After performing all my operational expenses, the remaining profit is going to be the net profit for my retail store. This is the very traditional model followed in almost all the retail businesses. So now we are going to discuss about what are the operational operations or key functions involved in the retail business. So when I talk about key functions, it is again divided into two types. It's called as the support functions and another is the core functions. Support functions involves managing the human resource, financing, marketing, and accounting of a store comes under the support function of a retail organization. And when we talk about core functions, it is again divided into commercial functions and the operational functions. Commercial functions are nothing but buying and merchandising a product. So there are uh, the buying department does the planning of merchandising, like when the product has to be bought and uh, uh, what is the right time to re restock the product is done by the buying department. They also will be managing the vendor relationship and product sourcing. So this is one of the key function of the retail business. And another is the merchandising. 
allocating the product and visually uh, dis visual display of the product in my store and managing my inventory these things comes under the merchandising department so this buying department and merchandising department plays a major role when i talk about the retail business and these are the commercial functions of a retail and next is the operational functions this operational functions involves the store management and warehouse management store management involves the operations of my store like uh, accounting marketing for my so store and consumers experience on the talent management these things comes under the store operations and another is the warehouse whenever i buy a product from my vendor i'll be storing that in my inventory and i'll be uh, replenishing uh, replenishing my store uh, these things are carried out by the warehouse department so all these four departments are interconnected and they work together to make a uh, a retail business successful for example if the buying department does their work at the right time they bought their product at the right time but the merchandising department if they fail to manage their inventory then the we cannot provide better experience to the customer here the term automation comes into action so automating uh, providing an automation between these four departments help us to manage the retail business in a better way that's what we are going to talk in today's session so before we talk about that we need to discuss about one of the major feature of retail business that is inventory management so uh, you know like uh, how in this session we are going to uh, discuss about how a product is managed in an inventory for example let's take uh, i just have a picture of a laptop sling bag this is one of the product i'm going to showcase you for every product we have in our inventory we will be having an sku number stock keeping unit number this number is unique for each and every product we have in our inventory so for this sku number we will be generating a barcode or it can be a qr code here i'm going to generate a barcode so we will be generating a barcode for that particular sku number and inside that barcode we will be storing all the product um, specifications and all the important details of the product so first and foremost is the date the date at which i am buying this product from my supplier will be captured in this section and second is the hierarchy of the product for example imagine i'm managing an hyper store or an hypermarket so in the hypermarket there are so many products that will be sold under a single shelf so in this hypermarket hierarchy plays a major role like for example let's take this the same laptop bag this will be categorized under the uh, main category bags and in the bags we will be having in sub category called as laptop bags and in the laptop bags we can have some more sub classes or groups to uh, to provide a best uh, uh, best hierarchy in my hyper store so this is very important to be captured and next is the initial quantity at which i'm going to buy at which i bought this product so with this initial quantity we will manage the demand of the product in my store and next is going to be the cost price the price at which i bought this product from my wholesaler and the selling price the price at which i am going to sell this product in my store so the the difference between this cost price and the selling price is going to be my store's gross profit so with that profit only i'll perform all other expenses that is involved in my store and next is going to be the attributes you can see like under the same brand or the same category there will be uh, so many colored products with so many different sizes so uh, at mentioning the attributes in that same barcode itself help us to uh, find the product at the right time and next is the quantity sold the the amount of quantity which is uh, which is getting sold also will be captured over here so these are the basic details to be captured when we manage a product in an inventory along with this 
we also will be capturing the location. So for example, if, a, if, if my hyper store has so many uh, warehouses at different location, I need to capture the location at which this product has been stored also inside this form itself. So now we will see about how I am managing my inventory step by step. The first step is going to be barcode. How I'm, uh, I'm going to generate a barcode and I'm going to showcase you how we are going to print the barcode. So here for each and every SKU number, I'll be generating a barcode and I'll be printing the barcode with the help of Soho Creator. I'm not going to take you through the slides. Let's go on to the demonstration and see how I'm going to perform that action. So this is my Zoho Creator account. So in this in this Zoho Creator account, I have a, a application called as Barcode. This is an application, a simple application in which I'm going to showcase you how I'm generating the barcode. So you, you can see clearly here I have a very single form in which I'm, I'm just capturing two, two details. One is going to be the SKU number. That is my first field. SKU number is an alphanumeric number. And as soon as I type the SKU number and submit the form, uh, a barcode will be generated in this image field. I'm using an image field because barcode is a PNG image. So now I'm just typing a number. Uh, this is just a random alphanumeric number I'm giving. And I'm just clicking on the submit button. So now if I go to the reports of this form, you can see a barcode getting generated for the SKU number I have just clicked. So now let's see what is the coding I wrote behind achieving this step. It's a very simple step. I'm going to the edit mode of this simple application. So in this application, I wrote a small function called as barcode generator, single line function. So here I'm using an external uh, link with which I'm going to generate the barcode. So let me show you how this link works. So at, at the end of this link, whatever parameter I'm passing, for example, it can be a string or it can be a number or it can be an alphanumeric number, whatever detail I pass as a parameter at the end, it will be generating the barcode for that particular number I'm passing. It can be of any number or any string. It will be generating the barcode. So at the end of this link, I'm passing my SKU number, which I am getting in this SKU number field. So according to that, it is just getting, uh, it is just generating a link for my uh, barcode image and I'm storing that image in the image field. So this is the image field. As soon as I submit this form, this image will get generated. So this is the small line of function that I'm using to generate my barcode. And next step is like, as I said before, as soon as I create the barcode, I have to print the barcode to perform the tagging system in my, in my retail store. So I have a custom action button. Let me click and show you. So as soon as I click this custom action button, it is just ask, uh, allowing me to print that particular uh, barcode. This is the barcode image and this is the SKU number for that particular barcode. Now, let me show you how I have achieved it. Again, I'm going to the uh, edit mode of this report. So in, in my report, I have an option called as open report properties. So when I click on this at the left corner, I can see an option called as print on the PDF. So this print and the PDF template uh, are used to generate the uh, I'm using this to generate the barcode. So when I click on the create template, it allows me to create a blank template or there is some set of template from which you can choose. In this set of template, there are some examples for how to create an invoice, certificates, notification, inventory uh, list. So you can make use of these templates if needed. But here I'm just going to print only the barcode image and the SKU number. So uh, in the fields, I have two fields. One is the image field. I just dragged and dropped it over here. And another is the SKU number field, which I have dragged and dropped it over here. So as soon as I click on this button, 
you can see a image field and an SKU number field getting printed out. So I'm just calling this URL in the delete script. Uh, so it is just opening my uh, printer in the new tab. So if you want to perform the bulk printing option for this barcode, you can write and delete script. So this is how I'm just generating the barcode and printing the barcode. Now let me show you a document. So this document uh, uh, is used to create the print template just I showcased you. So uh, whenever you create the print template, it is visualized only in these types of reports, list report, timeline report, Kanban and map reports. And also uh, there are few steps which you can follow to create an element field, integration fields in your um, print template that you're printing. So this is used for creating many types of invoices, billings, etc. You can refer this document. This document will be shared in the chat. You can make use of this document to perform the uh, print template feature. So now I've just uh, gave you an example about how I'm uh, generating the barcode for my SK number and how I am printing it. So now let's move on into the actual application that I got today. So I have just named this application as Zilka Hyperstore. So in this application, I'm going to manage my inventory, all my products in my inventory. So here I'll be having an inventory form where I'll be capturing all my um, all uh, basic details of my product. And for each and every product, I'll be generating a barcode and I'll be printing the barcode also. I'll be creating a sales order for my products in my hyperstore and I'll be generating the bill for the sales order. As soon as the sales order is done, we need to update the stock in the inventory. So these are this is the simple process that is involved in the application that I brought in some demo today. Let's see, before we see that actual application, I have also used a product for integrating my Zoho Creator. And the product that, that I have used for integration is Zoho Inventory. So uh, in the Zoho Inventory, I'm going to manage my reordering level and the values. So whenever I had a product in my Zoho Creator, I'll be pushing that product into my Zoho Inventory. From my Zoho Inventory, I'm going to manage my reordering level. So in order to perform, uh, in order to create a connection between my Zoho Creator account and my Zoho Inventory account, I'm going to use a concept called as integration flow. So use this integration flow is a drag and drop option to connect two applications uh, in a very easy way. So I'm using that integration flow to push my product details from Zoho Creator into Zoho Inventory. Not only this, I'll add Whenever we make a sales order, we need to update the stock also in the Zoho inventory, right? So whenever we create a sales order in my Zoho creator form, I will be updating the stock level in my Zoho inventory as well. In order to perform this function also, I'm using the integration flow webhook method. So I will be showcasing you how I perform this in detail when I move on to the live demonstration. So now we will see the actual application that I brought us for, a, for the demo today. So this is the application I was talking about, Zilka Hyperstore. So um, in this application, I have so many forms and fields. The first one is the dashboard. In the dashboard, I'm managing all my store's day-to-day uh, -day performance. We will come to this dashboard at the end. And second, I have a form called as inventory or stock. In this inventory or stock form, I'm going to capture all my uh, product details and I have a report for my inventory or stock form. So in this, you can see, I have so many products added in uh, beforehand and I, there are some barcode which got generated. We will see in detail now. And uh, this is one of the form. And second one is the sales order form. And after managing my inventory, I have a sales order form where I'll be capturing the billing information, which involves the customer name, cashier, bill number, bill date, and the product information, the product that they bought, and total price will be auto-calculated. 
So and uh, this is the sales order form I have. Not only that, I also have. I'm also going to manage my store employees, and also I'm going to manage my customer informations in this application. So this help us to manage a uh, manage and store in a proper way. Now let's see all these forms in detail. First, let me go ahead with the inventory or the stock form. So in this inventory or stock form, I have three divisions or three sections. The first section is going to be the barcode in which as soon as I pass my SKU number, a barcode will get generated for that particular product. And second section is going to be the product details. In this product details, I'm going to manage all the basic informations of a product. And next is going to be the product pricing, that is the selling price, cost price, and the availability of the product in my inventory. So these are the three sections I have in my inventory or stock form. So now let me try to add a product and show you how it is working. So uh, since I'm, ju I'm just showcasing you an example for a hyper store, I, I, I'm having three divisions of product. One is under fashion, food, and general merchandise. Now, let me try to add a food or, or let try to add a fashion. So, um, as soon as I give the fashion division, I made the SKU number to be auto generated. And uh, as soon as the SKU number has been entered, a barcode link would have got generated. So, I made it as an automated stuff, but you can manually type it ac according to the product you wanted to add. And uh, after adding the division, under this division, I have some groups like fashion and business. Now I'm just going to add the accessories as a group. And under the accessories, I have a class, as I said before, hierarchy plays a major role in an, uh, in an big stores like hypermarkets. So under the accessories, let me try to add the box. So I'm going to give the name for this uh, product as laptop bag. And I will be uploading the image from my computer. So if you have any attributes, I have added in black color bag. So I'll be adding the attribute also over here. And if you want, you can add some more attributes to it. And the initial quantity I have is I have 40 uh, pieces of bag. So initial quantity is 40 and the unit of measurement is pieces. So I'm, I'm just measuring it as 40 pieces of bag. And I'm going to sell this bag for 1,200 rupees. And the cost price at which I bought this bag is going to be 1,500 rupees. So these are the basic details we need. Also, we can capture the location of the warehouse. Let me give the location for the warehouse for now as a channel. So this is how I'm managing my inventory or stock form. Now, as soon as I click on the submit button, a report will get generated. You can see the laptop bag that we have added just now. So in this laptop bag, uh, SKU number, for that SKU number, a barcode has been generated. I'm using the same process that I showcased you just now. And this is the selling price of my bag. And this is the initial quantity that I have in my inventory. So now I have a button called this print barcode. As soon as I click on that, it allows me to print that particular barcode alone. So this is how I'm achieving it. This barcode generation is also I'm using the print template that I showcased you now. So this is how I'm managing my inventory in my Zoho Creator. As I said before, I, I'll be pushing my items into my Zoho inventory as well. In order to perform that, I'm writing an integration flow. So in this integration flow, it's just getting loaded. So in this integration flow, I will be creating an item. As soon as I submit my uh, form, item, inventory or stock form, I will be creating that item in my Soho inventory. So let me click edit this and show you. Whenever I create an item in the Zoho inventory, I need to pass few details like the item's name, item's SKU number that we are just storing it 
in my in my inventory or stock form and another is the unit of measurement like i i just measured the bags as pieces 40 pieces of bag and then i'm also passing uh, like yeah selling price of my bag and the cost price at which i bought this bag and the and finally the initial stock level or the initial quantity i have uh, the initial quantity of bags i have in my inventory so these are the details i'm pushing from zoho creator into zoho inventory using this integration flow so as soon as i push the details it will be showing a success message over here. It says it's queued. I'm just refreshing it. Okay, so the bag would have got added over here. Uh, it's just getting loaded. After it loads, we will see it again. I'll be passing the inventory and the output will, will get loaded over here. So this is how I'm pushing the details from my Zoho creator into my Zoho inventory. Next, I'm moving on to the sales order that I'm going to show you. So in this sales order form, as I said before, I'll be capturing two sections. One is going to be the bill information and another is going to be the product information. So in the bill information, I'm, I'll be capturing my customer's name, cashier's name, and the bill number and the bill date. Bill, I'm capturing the bill date along with it. And in the product information form, I will be adding the products as in sub form. So in this, you can see as soon as I enter my SKU number, the product name and the unit price of the product will get auto generated. Let me show you. Let us take an example. Uh, let's take this uh, same bag. The initial quantity is 40, right? Uh, I'm just copying this SKU number and pasting it over here. So as soon as I give that, the product name and the unit price has got auto generated. I can get the quantity and the subtotal and the total will get auto generated as well. So now I've just copy pasted my SKU number, but we have a barcode, right? Now let's see how I'm going to scan the barcode and auto fetch my details. For that, let me just open my tab. So in my tab, in my tab, I have my creator account, creator application. So in that application, I have Silka Hyper Store. Yeah. So in the Silka Hyper Store application, as we saw now, we have the sales order form. In the sales order form, I will be selecting the customer's name, cashier's name, and the bill number and bill date. Uh, bill date is auto generated. Bill number, if you want, you can just type it out. And in the add products, you can see at the corner, there is a scanner over here. This allows you to scan either a barcode or a QR code. Now let's scan a barcode. See, let's take this T-shirt. Uh, for this T-shirt, the initial quantity is 28. Let me try to scan this once again. Let me try it again. Let me add the details once again. I'm sorry. So as soon as I scan the barcode, you can see the product name and the unit price for the product has been auto-generated. Now, the you can see here, I'm just going to give the quantity as two. The subtotal and the total will get auto-generated. So now I'm just adding only one product for to show us an example. So now you can see the total price would have got added. Now I'm clicking on the submit button. As soon as I click on the submit button, a bill will get generated for that particular product. 
So I'm just generating the bill. You can print and give it over here. Also, you can write in payment in the same workflow. So this is how I'm performing this. Uh, now, now when I refresh this inventory of stock, now you can see the t-shirts quantity has been changed from 28 to 26 because I bought two, two products in my first sales order that I have made. So now when I go to my Zoho inventory, when I refresh my Zoho inventory, the t-shirt, the stock on hand is 28. Now, so now as I'm just trying to refresh it once again. Yeah, now you can see it would have got changed. In order to achieve that, I'm writing another integration flow. Using webhook. So in this integration flow, I'm just trying to update my stock level in my Zoho inventory. So you can see I, I have a webhook. This webhook is nothing. It generates an uh, URL. You can use this URL in the Delude script and you can call this. Uh, you can invoke this entire integration flow. Uh, I have used this invoke URL in my uh, successful submission of my sales order. As soon as I click on the submit button in the Zoho inventory, an item will get updated. So I'll be giving the items ID first and I'll be giving the stock level. I mean, initial stock level or the quantity with, uh, which is after the making the sales order, whatever quantity is that will get updated in my Zoho inventory. Uh, since my network is slow, it's just taking time to load, but it will get loaded. This is how I'm just performing this action. So this is how I'm managing my sales order over here. And you would have seen, uh, I, the, you would have seen the bill has got generated as soon as I just gave my purchase order. Again, when I go to the edit mode of this report, in the open report properties, in the print and the PDF, I have just created a bill and I'm using this link to print my bill. So I'm using the elements. We have so many elements like heading, paragraph, image, tab, tab table, spacer, and the fields. You can uh, refer the document which we sent to create this billing system. So this is how I'm achieving this process. Also, you would have seen, I have just scanned my barcode uh, with the help of the uh, field in my form. So this is a documentation that allows you to choose which field is applicable to scan the QR code on the barcode. The fields like single line, multi-line, email, URL, etc. are useful to, uh, are used to scan this uh, QR code or the barcode. And also in this documentation, it, uh, it, it, uh, it is also clearly explained how Zoho created, what are the formats for the QR and the barcode supported in the Zoho created aspect. So this is what I wanted to show you. And now we will also discuss about other extended use cases you can think about while creating a solution uh, or while performing an automation in your retail industry. Now, uh, in this extended use cases, I'm going to divide it as sales and purchase. When we talk about sales as a use case, you can think about generating the discounted sale. So when I talk about discounted sale, you can automate both the trade discount and uh, amount discount in a single phase. So and the uh, next use case you can think about is franchisee management. So you can just create an application and get the portal access to all your franchisees. So from a single place, you can manage all the inventories of your franchisees. And next is the logistics or managing the, uh, I mean, providing an automation in the logistics is very useful. Imagine you are uh, you're ma managing a store, non you're a non-store retailer, where you manage the mail orders and phone call orders, you need to supply the product to the customers at the right time. So in that phase, logistics needs to be automated. And next is the point of sale. So these are some of the use cases you can think about uh, regarding these sales in the retail business. 
and when it comes to purchase you can manage the separate supplier portal you can manage all your vendors and the distributors uh, relationship in, from a single place the automation in this helps you to provide the best purchase experience and next is the warehouse management and you can also automate the procurement and the quotation plan between you and your supplier and also you can manage the supply chain so these are some of the use cases you can think about while managing a purchase orders in my retail industry so uh, these are some of the use cases i brought uh, which which needs to be automated uh, by uh, by this i'm coming to the end of the session so now let me quickly summarize what are the features that i have showed in the zoho creator so first feature we saw is the qr and the barcode scan scanner Uh, in the Zoho Creator, the QR and the barcode scanner uh, is used in certain fields, with like single line, multi line, etc., which is there in the document. You can refer that. And next is going to be the print template. So in the print template, you can add an element, you can add a field, sub form, lookup, and even integration field can be added while generating an invoice or the billings kind of stuffs using the print template. and also this print template as i said before is applicable only to certain reports like list timeline kanban and map report also we also discussed about the integration flow webhook links um like uh, i just showed you an integration flow with which i'm just updating the stock level in my inventory this webhook links can be used in the invoke url function of delugecker that that is where i have triggered this integration flow so these are the features that we saw well uh, that we saw in the application that i brought as an that that i brought for the demo in today's session also we we have another up few upcoming sessions create a tech connect series on 8th and another le next learning table series on 1st of march and after the session if you have any questions you can uh, always write to us at training@zohocreator.com